Boston Bros is number one thing not. You're dead wrong. You can catch me doing Miss McKayden with my prodders on. It's real boxing talk every time we meet with Ned, the TBE, and Conspiracy G. We bring it to you raw, on bias. You know the deal. You can even get a poor dealie here from Dollar Bill with my guys by my side. You know we going live. All we need you to do is please like and subscribe. Boxing Bros. Peace. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is similar to the Love Box. This may be the new Love Box, actually. It's a uh, Twitter beef with uh, Earl Spence, uh, Terrence Crawford, Bob Arrow, uh, and Al Heyman. It's just all over the place. So um, if you go to Earl Spence's Instagram account like seven hours ago, Michael Benson wrote that uh, this is a quote from Bob Arrow. And you know Michael Benson. He's a reliable source. Bob Arum, I talked to Al Heyman. He's amendable to the fight. Spence is the obstacle. Spence throws out numbers and percentages. We believe Crawford will beat him. Unfortunately, Spence believes the same. Don't blame Heyman. Blame Spence. Three knockdown rule. <clears throat> That's what uh, Michael Benson tweeted that um, Al Heyman said. And then Earl Spence wrote laughing emojis. And I believe what he was trying to say was lion ass Bob strikes again. Um, so then Earl Spence goes on to say all those accomplishments with names people don't remember, laughing emoji. Um, then Earl Spence says, all I hear is accomplishments. I see so many greats I look up to inside the ring who don't take care of the business outside the ring that shut up and box shit been over at least with me. Then Spence wrote, everybody tell boxers just fight. Nobody telling these guys in suits, I believe is what he meant to write and networks who been getting paid off boxers and effing them over for centuries, take a loss or break even on this one, you good money wise, regardless, just want to see the fight, laughing emojis. Then he wrote, instead of uh, taking Bob 2K signing bonus, went with Al Heyman, my advisor, and didn't take a signing bonus, took a stipend a month for a year to hold me afloat Till I started making money, till I started making okay money, because I knew where I could take it, believe in you. I want to fight the best, though, because Lord knows I'll use y'all favorite fighters as a tune-up. So yeah. this is like all his angry. So some guy posted this, uh, Brian Blake, I don't know who he is, but you know, he posted this about Spence and Crawford, and then Spence retweeted it, and basically... <laughs> said that spits in uh, Crawford across the street. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, basically, this is just a rant he's went on, and this was two hours ago uh, in the U.S. So, Shroud Albert, what's your thoughts on, you know, what Michael Benson quoted uh, Bob Aram is saying and Spence going on a tirade about it? Uh, what's your reaction to it? Or more drama in in the love box between uh, <laughs> these guys. It's it's eventually gonna happen, you know. This was a situation we've seen this before, you know. And um, I think this this gonna play out, play out again until these guys get what they want and they deserve to get what they want, you know. I, I'm really with the fighters on this one, you know. Um, I believe that the fighters. Um, dessert. the fans want to see this fight, right? Give the fighters what they want. These are two fighters who deserve to be compensated um, for this fight. I believe this fight's going to happen. I just um, believe they're just going to play it out. Get more excitement, get more things going, and eventually we're going to get this fight. You know? Um, is building more interest, waiting to see what they're going to do about venues and what they can do with a crowd and all that situation. They're going to, we've seen this before in boxing, you know, but it's good. I like it. I like it. It makes me seem like this is not uh, drilling in a way. I don't hear them talking about other opponents right now. You know, they're still talking about each other and going back and forth. So that's good. So, you know, just, I'm just waiting to see how this plays out as, as, 
as the uh, welterweights turn, you know. <laughs> this way how it seems in this in this in this drama field is turned into boxing, you know. So we'll just see how it, it plays out. But I, I believe that the fight's gonna take place. G. Yeah, um, like Trill, I actually agree. Um like I'm I favor uh Spence on this one, you know what I mean? Like it's the fighter taking all the risks, <clears throat> you know, like even if let's just say hypothetically Bob's telling the truth, right? That uh Al says, hey, you know what, everything looks good, I'm all for it. We're just waiting on Spence. To me, what I feel like what Bob's doing is just trying to force Spence's hand. Like, hey, PBC is all set. Why aren't you doing it? And then, you know, probably force the audience, like the, the fans and everything. Like, yo, take the fight. Just take the fight. But at the end of the day, it's like, yo, man, like, he's right. You know, like, look at all of these greats. Died broke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Guys that can't form a sentence correctly. You know, like, you don't see these Al Heyman's, these, these Bob Arums, these Eddie Hearns, after these guys retire, cutting them off big fat checks. Like, yo, I appreciate all the millions that you made me. They don't do that. They just hop on the next best thing. You know what I'm saying? So to me, I, I respect this. Because if I was a boxer, I would do the same thing that Earl's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I've said this several times on the show. Once I get to a certain status, I don't even care about belts. Because I know now my name is bigger than the belts. I can negotiate what I want. So I think Spence is doing just that, where it's like, hey, you know what? Yeah, TC, all your accomplishments is cute, but nobody knows who you done beat. That sounds great and all, but I know my worth, and I want a bigger cut. And if Bob really wants that fight, he's going to have to cut that bigger check. Or Spence could just wait, and then wait till TC's contract is up a top rank, and then be like, yo, Al, go pick him up so we can make this fight. So I think that's what it really is. Bob is getting desperate, so now Bob is throwing out, um, throwing out Al Heyman's name in the mix to to make the you know the the boxing community now blame Spence. Like, oh, Spence, now you ducking? When I don't think he's ducking, he's just trying to get a bigger payday. Like with Bob's contracts, oh, we'll give you one million, two million max. Like, yo, come on, man, this is a big fight, man. Like, two million ain't cutting it. So I agree one thousand with Earl Spence on this one. GB. Man, this is just Bob antics, man. You know, Bob right now, Bob is throwing everything at, at what he can to make this fight happen. He's throwing, he done throw the kitchen sink, he threw, done throw the furniture at him. He done threw everything, yo. Now he's about to rip the fixtures out the wall and everything to try to, he's, he's, he's by the skin of his teeth, he's trying to get this fight to happen. So, you know, it's all a bunch of antics. And, you know, shout out to Spence for like just calling him out on the BS because, you know, you know, everybody knows what's real. Like, you know, you get in the media and say all of this stuff till, you know, everybody sit down, actually exchange words, get on the conference call, things like that. But, uh, you know, it's all, it's all BS, yo. Bob, Bob, Bob already showed his hand, yo. So, you know, we already know what, it, what all the issues going on on your side of the street. So we, we here, though, you know. You got to cross. You got to make this fight happen if you want to, if you want to even have noodles again, Bob. So, yeah. <laughs> Yo, Bob, I just realized that Bob just pulled one of the sleazy tactics. You know, one of the you know, you don't really use one of these these tactics unless you like, you know, you're a sleaze bag, but he we, he tried to split the team. He tried to go in between the team. <laughs> <laughs> he just got really desperate. That's hilarious. I just had to mention that. That was hilarious. Bob is, he's a savage. <laughs> mm, you know, like, yo, your girl be like, yo, where were you last night? Yo, I was with Bob or something. Or, yo, I was with Al. <laughs> well, I called Al and he said you was not with him. Like, damn. <laughs> Bob, I, know, I know Al's like, it ain't even happened like that. You know, Bob just switched to Al's words. <laughs> <laughs> the squeeze ball tactic. <laughs> that word, Al. I thought you supposed to have my back. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. So for me, man, Mike, let's just be objective for a moment. Like, take all emotion out of this and just look at it from an objective standpoint. Because this is all I've been trying to say to people. Let's say hypothetically. In 2018, Earl Spence avoided Terrence Crawford. Even I, 
believe that. When he said, why don't I just fight this guy? Why don't I just fight that guy? I believe Terrence Crawford wasn't in his plan. So there's no need to go back to that. For me, Earl Spence was the reason that fight didn't take place. 100% at that time. But after Earl Spence beat Sean Porter, after Earl Spence beat Danny Garcia, and he offered 60-40 to Terrence Crawford, and Terrence Crawford said, that's not enough, and I want to fight Manny Pacquiao, looking at it from an objective standpoint, now I have to look at Terrence Crawford and say, well, you're the reason this fight's not happening. For everyone who's saying that Terrence Crawford deserves more than 40%, your, your reasoning is for what he accomplished at 140. But he's fighting at 147. He wants to beat the guy who has more belts than him at 147. He wants to fight the guy who sold more pay-per-views than him at 147. The irony of people laughing at Danny Garcia and Earl Spence selling 200,000 pay-per-view buys during a pandemic, but are okay with Terrence Crawford and his two pay-per-view appearances when there was no pandemic, there was no extreme recession, and he only sold 100,000 pay-per-view buys in two fights. In one fight with Danny Garcia, the fight you're laughing at, Earl Spence doubled the pay-per-view sales that Terrence Crawford had in his entire career. Terrence Crawford, after being the undisputed junior Walter Wade champion, had his fight on basic cable. ESPN, basic cable. You know, there's this saying, use a basic, <laughs> right? Well, I'm not saying it. Faxes <laughs> saying, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the basic is now looking at the person fighting on premium. Like, not just premium, pay-per-view. Like, you can't watch this fight unless you pay for it. And laughing at what that person sold when that person sold more than that person. That's like a person driving a Hyundai laughing at someone driving a Benz because it's two years old. Like, you not understand how, like, you just seem foolish? So... Earl Spence has more belts. He's beating the bigger names. I say bigger names, meaning that these names are more well-known at Walter Waite than the names that Terrence Crawford is beating. So you can argue who's better. I'm not here to do that because that's opinionated. What you can't argue is Earl Spence beat the bigger names. He's beating the bigger names. He has more titles and he sold more pay-per-views. How can you argue that he doesn't deserve the lion's share. Especially when some of you will argue Spence doesn't deserve the lion's share, but would say Deontay Wilder didn't deserve 50-50 with AJ. How can you see it when it comes to AJ, but you can't see it when it comes to Crawford? It's emotion. How can you argue that uh, Teofimo Lopez deserves more money than Javante Tank Davis because he has more belts? But Javante Tank Davis has done more than him in terms of selling pay-per-views. When it comes to Javante Tank Davis and Teofimo Lopez, some of you would tell me, well, Teofimo Lopez got more belts, so he deserves more. I would argue you just don't like his management. You just don't like Tank. That's why you're making the argument Teofimo Lopez because he got more belts. When it comes to Anthony Joshua, you'll say he got more belts. He sells more pay-per-views. He's beating the better names. So Wilder doesn't deserve 50-50. Okay, cool. So you can see it then. But when it comes to Terrence Crawford, he got more belts like Teofimo Lopez. You don't care. He sold more pay-per-view buys like Anthony Joshua. You don't care. That's because you like Terrence Crawford and you don't like him. But using all objective standards, he's the A side. So how can you say that 60-40 is a robbery? 
If you take 60 40 on the on the first fight, just make sure you get it back if you win in the rematch. That's it. And I've already given TC the blueprint. If he wants to go on his own, he should take that 60 40 in this ass for for, for uh Al Heyman and PBC. If I beat Spence and if I lose the Spence, regardless of what happens with this fight, I'll take 60 40 if I get two more fights with your top five Walter Waits. Because what that does is it sets him up to go out on his own and he knows he got two fights. Win, lose, or draw with Earl Spence. He has two fights where he's going to get the majority of the bread with some of Al Heyman's fighters. And Al Heyman will work it out with him because it's like he has him on a stable even if he doesn't. It's a win-win. That's how he can win. You understand? But no, he's sitting here doing this and doing all that. Like, Like to me... If you're being objective, a 60-40 split, if that's all Earl Spence is asking for, and he was willing to bet a million dollars, he can beat Earl Spence, he was willing to do all that, why not take the fight? But I will say this one thing to Earl Spence, too. If you're going to use people's favorite fighters as tune-ups, why not just do 50-50 and tune TC up? Take that belt and set up everyone. Because if you beat TC, too, that puts you on another level. So there's, there's, there's issues with both of them. I'm sick of it. I just want to see the fight. But in my opinion, and I've been objective this entire time, I'm not going off feelings. I hold everyone to the same standard. I think 60-40 is a fair deal for TC. And if TC doesn't take that deal, I think he's the reason the fight didn't happen. That's how I feel about it. Let us know how you feel in the comments section. Please like and subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We are the Boxing Bros.